Welcome to Greenlee Library. My name is Danielle Apfelbaum, and I am the Scholarly Communication Librarian at the Thomas D. Greenlee Library. Today I'll be showing you several resources that will be especially helpful as you go through ENV 101. By the end of this brief video, you'll be able to identify and apply strategies for developing and narrowing a broad topic, locate scholarly peer-reviewed journal articles utilizing the library databases, define the term plagiarism, and describe good practices for paraphrasing, and recognize basic characteristics of in-text and reference list citations in APA format. First, to get to the library's resources, you need to get to the library's homepage. I recommend going through your MyFSC account to do this. Go to farmingdale.edu and click My FSC in the upper right-hand corner of the page. Enter your FSC credentials. Your username will be your email address minus the at farmingdale.edu. Your password will be the same password you use to log into your email, Blackboard, and so on. If you have any difficulty logging into your MyFSC account, try resetting your password. If you still have difficulty, please contact Help Desk at helpdesk at farmingdale.edu. Once you arrive at your account, click Library in the left-hand vertical menu. This will take you to the library homepage. If you're really stuck on picking a topic, Opposing Viewpoints is a great place to explore. To get to Opposing Viewpoints, you'll start at the library homepage. Click Databases under the Search field. This will take you to our A to Z listing of our databases. You can use the search field in the right-hand corner of the screen to quickly locate the database. Just begin by typing the name of the database. Click Opposing Viewpoints to access the database. If you are off campus, you may be prompted to enter your Farmingdale State College credentials. If you have any difficulty, please email reference at farmingdale.edu. Because this course focuses on energy sustainability and the environment, you can scroll to the bottom of the page where you'll see a section called Browse Issues and click Energy and Environmentalism. This will take you to the list of topic pages available under this broad subject. For instance, if we click Renewable Energy, we'll be taken to the Renewable Energy topic page. When we arrive, there is an overview of the topic in the center of the page. Be sure to click Read More because this will give you a great summary of all the subtopics within the topic area. For instance, if you read the Renewable Energy Overview, you might find that what you're really interested in is solar energy, and knowing this will really help cut down the amount of time you spend searching when you start looking for articles in the databases. So reading the overview in a topic area you might be interested in is a really good investment of your time now, because it will save you time as you get to later stages of your project. If you're still familiarizing yourself with your topic and you're ready for a more in-depth overview of a subtopic, you'll want to check out reference sources. These include short articles from specialized encyclopedias, and again, they can help you identify a specific topic for your paper. Remember how we decided we were interested in solar energy when we read the Renewable Energy Overview? When we click Reference, we can see that there's an entire overview dedicated just to covering the topic of solar energy. As we read through the article, we can pick up on specific things that we can use to focus our paper, such as the fact that there are different types of solar energy, active and passive. And we've learned about a specific type of active solar energy, photovoltaic cells. Now we have something really specific to focus on when we're ready to search. Now I want to be clear on two things before I move on. Reference sources are not scholarly journal articles, so they won't count towards that requirement in your assignment. However, if you do use them in your paper, you still need to cite them. You can also use the databases to help you identify and narrow down a topic. We'll start with Energy and Power Source. To get to Energy and Power Source, you'll start at the library homepage. Click Databases under the search field. This will take you to our A to Z listing of databases. You can use the search field in the right-hand corner of the screen to quickly locate the database. Just begin by typing the name of the database. Click Energy and Power Source to access the database. If you are off campus, you may be prompted to enter your Farmingdale State College credentials. If you have any difficulty, please email reference at farmingdale.edu. Every item in the database, whether it's an article or an ebook or an image or a video, gets tagged with an official subject term, and these subject terms tell you what the item is about. 
These terms are organized into narrower terms and broader terms, and you can actually explore the materials in the database using these linked lists of broader and narrower terms. To do this, you'll go through the following process. Once in the database, we're going to go to the top horizontal menu and click Thesaurus. Now let's say we're still interested in solar power and we want to find a list that can give us an idea of how we can broaden or narrow our focus. We'll type in solar energy and click relevancy ranked and click browse. Now we can see that solar energy is one of the first items in our list. If we click it, we'll see two important things. First, we'll see a definition of the term. This is really important because this tells us what we're going to find if we do a search for this term. If the definition doesn't sound like what you're looking for, that's a good sign that you need to try a different term. Second, we have our broader and narrower terms. So first, we have our broader terms. These are the terms for which solar energy is a narrower term. If we click renewable energy sources, we see that solar energy is a narrower term within renewable energy resources. What we want to do is find a narrower term within solar energy. So when we return to our list, you'll notice that we see the term photovoltaic again. Now, if you recall the browsing we did in opposing viewpoints, we decided based on our reading of the overviews that we were interested in photovoltaic cells. So if we click photovoltaic power generation, we see that photovoltaic cells is actually a narrow term under this topic. So we can add this to a search for articles by checking the box next to photovoltaic cells, unchecking the box next to photovoltaic power generation, clicking add, and clicking search beside the keyword field where your new search will populate. Once you click search, you'll see a list of materials that you can browse to help you refine your topic further. Now that we've talked about narrowing your topic, we'll go over finding books and ebooks on your topic. First, navigate to the library homepage. In the center of the library homepage, you will see a search field. Under the search field, you will see a horizontal menu. In this menu, you will click books and ebooks. So I will type in photovoltaic cells once I've clicked books and ebooks. Once we have our initial search, we'll want to refine it further to ensure that we're only getting books and ebooks. To do this, go to the menu of limiters on the left side of the page, expand material type, and select books. This will return results that are available in our physical collection and our online collection. If you want to limit to ebooks only, expand availability and click available online. When you see an ebook that you'd like to access, click the title. This will take you to the record for the item. From the record, you can do several things. First, you can generate a citation in MLA, APA, Chicago Turabian, or Harvard formats. Just remember that this is a computer-generated citation, and there may be an error or two, so it's always best to double-check your citation against a style guide to be sure that it's correct before handing in your research project. You can also email yourself a copy of the record to remind yourself to return to it later. Or, if you've logged into your account, you can click the pin to add it to your favorites. To view an ebook, you'll click the link under View Online and Full Text Availability to access the volume. Once you've located relevant books and ebooks, you'll want to begin your search for journal articles. Now that we've covered searching for books and ebooks, we'll go over searching for peer reviewed articles in the library's databases. We'll look at two databases today Energy and Power Source and IEEE Explore. To get to Energy and Power Source, you'll start at the library homepage. Click Databases under the search field. This will take you to our A to Z listing of databases. You can use the search field in the right-hand corner of the screen to quickly locate the database. Just begin by typing the name of the database. Click Energy and Power Source to access the database. If you are off campus, you may be prompted to enter your Farmingdale State College credentials. If you have any difficulty, please email reference at farmingdale.edu. Once in the database, you will see your advanced search options. Before we start our search, I want to draw your attention to a feature which is going to allow you to save a tremendous amount of time by searching multiple databases at once. Right above the keyword fields, you'll see a link entitled Choose Databases. 
Once you click this, a pop-up will appear, and you will be able to add in several related databases. If you're not sure if a database is appropriate for your search, just click the little speech bubble icon next to it, and you'll be able to read a description of the database's contents. I suggest adding in Academic Search Complete, Applied Science and Technology Complete, Environment Complete, and General Science Full Text to start. Once you have made your selections and applied those selections, you'll begin by entering your keywords. Let's say you're interested in researching the use of renewable energy in healthcare facilities. In the first field, we'll enter renewable energy. In the second field, we'll enter hospitals or healthcare facilities or medical facilities or clinics or medical centers. Now, you may be wondering what the and and or are for. These terms help us tell the database what we want in our result list. So when I type in renewable energy, I'm telling the database to return any result in which this term appears. When I set the drop-down menu to and, I'm telling the database to return any result with the term or terms in the first field along with one or more terms from the second field. When I put or between terms, I'm telling the database that I'll accept any result so long as it has at least one of the terms between which or appears. So essentially, this advanced search is doing the work of four separate simple searches. When we're happy with how we've constructed our search, we'll press search. We get quite a few results, so we'll want to filter our results using our limiters. Under limit two, we'll limit to full text. It's important to remember that the library does not subscribe to everything that might be part of a given database. So this filter will ensure that you're getting only those results to which the library can provide access. Next, you'll click Scholarly Peer-Reviewed Journals. This will ensure that the articles returned in your search are from peer-reviewed journals. If you're not familiar with peer-reviewed journals, click the link in the description below for a quick and helpful video on this topic. Since I only want to look at the most recent research, I'll use the date limiter to filter my results to only those articles which were published between 2010 and 2020. You'll also want to click Academic Journals under Source Types. Now, you could use these limiters and stop here and begin to browse, but if you feel that you still have too many results, you may want to try using the subject thesaurus filter. Just expand the filter if it is closed and click show more. I suggest alphabetizing a list to make browsing easier. Once you have alphabetized your list, you can go through the selected topics you would like to see addressed in your results and click update. For now, we'll skip this because we have a pretty manageable list of results. Before we review our results, I want to point out a helpful feature. The share button is important in that it will allow you to save your search as it is by generating a permalink. This is important for two reasons. First, if you conduct your search but don't have time to finish looking through all of your results, you can bookmark the link you generated by the share button and pick up where you left off at any time. Second, I am going to ask you to show me your search in a class exercise. You'll need to use the share button to generate the link that the exercise is asking for. When you're ready to look at an article in your list, click the title. On the left hand of the screen, you will see your options for accessing the article. In the center of the page, you will see more information about the article. This can be particularly helpful for a number of reasons. First, the database provides the terms under which the article has been indexed. We can click these link terms to see all of the materials in the database that are organized under these terms. Or we can use these terms to conduct a new, more targeted search. For instance, we can copy key terms into the search field and set the drop-down menu to subject. This will allow us to search only subject sections of each record in the database. Second, most records provide an abstract of the article. This will give you a brief overview of what the article is about, so you can determine if it's relevant to your project or not. Finally, on the right-hand side of the page, you'll see a number of tools. We won't go over all of them, but you can use the Google Drive tool to send a copy of the article to your Google Drive account, the email tool to email yourself a copy of the article, the site tool to generate a citation for the article, 
and again, check the accuracy of the citation before handing in your project, and the permalink tool to save a link to this page. The permalink is important for two reasons. First, the link in the address bar expires, so you must use the permalink in order to return to this page. Second, it's important because I will be asking you in a class exercise to provide the permalink to an article you've selected. The next database you'll want to try is IEEE Explore. This database is focused primarily on electrical and electronics engineering topics. Even though IEEE Explore looks a little different from Energy and Power Source, the same strategies will work in this database. To get to IEEE Explore, again, you'll start at the library homepage. Click Databases under the search field. This will take you to our A to Z listing of databases. You can use the search field in the right-hand corner of the list to get to IEEE Explore quickly. Just type in IEEE Explore and you will see the database appear in the A to Z list. You'll arrive on the simple search page. We can type in our topic of interest here. In this case, photovoltaic cells, and we'll click search. IEEE Explorer is a huge database, and we only subscribe to a small portion of it. So the first limiter you'll want to select is subscribed content limiter. Then I suggest using the publication date limiter. The materials in this database go back several decades, so I'm going to limit my search to materials published within the last 10 years. This will ensure that my result pool has the most up-to-date information on my topic. If you want, you could even limit it to the last five years, depending upon your topic. The final thing I'll want to do before reviewing my results is click publication topics. This works just like the thesaurus limiter we saw in the last database. We'll click the limiter to expand it and then click show more. This will show you a list of subjects associated with your search. You can select the topics you would like to see addressed in your result list and click update. If you're unhappy with the way you've filtered a search, you can always remove one or more filters by going to the top of the search results page and clicking the little X next to the filter you wish to remove. When you're ready to look at an article in your list, click the title. At the top of the article, you'll see that you have two buttons. First, you have the Cite button. This will provide you with one plain text citation for the item. Be sure to check the citation style generated by the Cite button with the conventions of the style required for your paper. Next to the Cite button, you will find the PDF button. Click this to generate a PDF of the article. You can also email the article to yourself by clicking the email icon. Now that we've discussed finding sources, we need to discuss citing sources. Failure to cite often results in plagiarism, which is presenting another's words, ideas, or research as your own. Fortunately, the easiest way to avoid plagiarism is to properly quote, paraphrase, and cite your sources. Direct excerpt should be surrounded by quotation marks and followed by an in-text citation. Make it clear to the reader how the quote connects to your work. Putting another author's words, research, or ideas into your own words is paraphrasing. Like a quote, this requires an in-text citation. In-text citations follow the author, comma, year format. Parenthetical citations can be used if you're not referencing the author or authors as part of a sentence. If you're referring to the author or authors as part of the sentence, you'll use the same format, except only the year will be contained within parentheses. Now, the database citation generators I've shown you are really helpful, but there's often one or two mistakes, so you will briefly go over the format for citing books and journal articles in your reference list. A journal article citation will follow this format. Author's last name, comma, first initial period, the year of publication in parentheses followed by a period, the title of the article followed by a period, the title of the journal, which is italicized, followed by a comma, followed by the volume in which the article was published, which is also italicized, followed by the issue in parentheses, followed by a comma, followed by the page numbers on which the article appeared. A book citation will follow this format. Author's last name, comma, first initial, period. 
the year in which the book was published, in parentheses, followed by a period, the title of the book, followed by a period, and the publisher, followed by a period. If you need assistance, please know that the librarians are here to help you. While the library will be open for the fall semester, please check the library homepage for the latest information if you intend to use the facilities. Please be advised that if you visit the library, you will be required to wear a face covering for the duration of your visit. Our hours are posted on the right side of the page. Again, please check our hours before visiting as they may change due to adjusted COVID-19 related protocols and holiday closings. You can get in touch with us virtually by emailing reference at farmingdale.edu or by using the Ask a Librarian form on our homepage. You can find this form right under our hours. Just click it and fill out the requested information. Finally, please take advantage of the resources we have assembled just for you. These can be located in the center of the page, just below our main header. I highly recommend checking out our library help videos. Here you'll not only find video tutorials to help you search our most popular databases, but you'll also find step-by-step -step video instructions for formatting citations in APA and MLA styles. Thank you for watching. Again, if you have any questions, a librarian is able to assist you.